Welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to be more welcome than that, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Let the joy of the Lord be on our faces this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to ask you a question this morning. Why are we here? Why are we here? Because we are told that we need to be here. The Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together. Yeah, it's a command. But why must we be? Why are we here? Yeah. Not why must we be here, why are we here? And I want to reference the scripture, Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. And I want to read it to you out of the Amplified Version of the Bible. It struck a chord with me. It says, Behold, I stand at the door, in brackets of the church, and continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, restore him, and he with me. Amen. So a couple of things I want to, to highlight to you about this is that number one is God is talking to us all the time. Amen. 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 And then it says, if anyone hears my voice, and so how do we hear the voice of God? We need to continually read the word of God. Amen. And then the words, and then the scripture says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, to open the door is a choice. It is my choice, it is your choice. Amen. And God says you must invite him in yes. so that he can come and restore. Hallelujah. And the way that God does restoration is in the last part of this verse. Where it says, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So we must do the word in order for the restoration to take place. And this is why we come into this place. Hallelujah. Because God is here. Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also. And we, when we know that Jesus is here. Let us open in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you that you are here with us this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can come here with expectation in our heart that you will restore us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that it doesn't matter what we go through in our days or in our nights, but when we come into this house, that you will restore. Lord, this is not a place where we leave our problems at the door. No, this is a place where we bring our problems right here into the presence of God and where you restore for us. I thank you, Father, that you are with each and every teacher and every person this morning that is ministering this morning, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you will guide us, that you will direct us, and that you will, you, your Holy Spirit will be in us. And as we minister, you are here, and we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to highlight to you this morning in our intercession on the following verses. I want you to turn with me to John 11 and verse 41. John 11 and verse 41. All of these scriptures that we are going to read and hear this morning, we are extremely powerful. Um, let, let, let us go through and you'll, you'll understand. John 11 41 says, they, they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Amen. So we want to thank God this morning that in the name of Jesus, he has heard each and every prayer from this church and from us. Amen. And that when we pray, we are not just praying for praying's sake, but we are praying because we are expecting a manifestation, Amen. to see a manifestation. And you know why we expect to see that manifestation? It is because in that verse Jesus says, I know that you always hear me. When he talks to his father, he says, I know that you always hear me. And so we need to change our focus. We need to, Jesus lifted up his eyes. He lifted up his eyes, he looked to heaven. He looked to God to be the solution, to be the source of everything. We change our focus no matter what the situation we are faced with. 
God will supply our needs. God will solve the problem. God will change the situation. Let us pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you are changing, that you are, you, you are giving us everything that we need. I thank you, Father, that whatever we are faced with, Father, that you are our supplies. Jesus, even when faced with death, lifted up his eyes and raised Lazarus, brought him back to life. I thank you, Father, that we have an expectation when we come here and we can know that our expectation is met as we come into this place. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. The second scripture is Second Corinthians chapter one and verse three. Second Corinthians chapter one and verse three. And it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. We want to thank God for the mercies that He has shown to this church and to each and every member. We also, whatever we go through, we know that God will comfort us and God is comforting us. We know that God has led us to this point where we are in this church and where we are in our lives. And so God will supply our need in terms of building, in terms of equipment, in terms of vehicles, in terms of instruments, in terms of everything that we need in this church. We know God will supply our need because He is a God of mercy. Whatever we face in our lives, God will supply our need. Let us thank you for that. Father, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you that you comfort us no matter what we go through. Your word says that your mercies are new every morning. Oh, Let us collect our new mercies each and every morning. Let us approach the, grave, the throne of grace for those mercies each and every day. Because your mercies are new every day. Oh, you have shown mercy to the church. You have shown mercy in our lives. Lord, we are not consumed because of your mercy. Oh, let us thank the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our next verse is Luke 8 and verse 15. Luke 8 and verse 15. It says, But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. And so we want to ask God this morning to transform our hearts so that we can see the results in our lives. Our hearts need to change. Because to change to experience the word of God, you see, we need to become yielded vessels. Yielded vessels. When we keep the word of God, we will receive from God. It says in the verse, we will bear fruit. And as we read, we are busy reading the Gospels at the moment. We've read Matthew, we've read Mark, we've read Luke, and now we're busy reading John. And I want to encourage you to actually compare these Gospels because they are the same. They are accounts by different uh, disciples, apostles of Jesus. And you can learn something as you compare them. And what I learned in this specific verse, so the parable of the sower is recorded in Matthew 13, in Mark 4, and in Luke 8, not in John. But Luke says, in the latter part of the verse, he says, we will bear fruit with patience. 
Yes. And if you go to Matthew and Mark, it says you will bear fruit, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. And I, I wondered why Luke didn't mention the, the folds as such. And he mentions with patience. And I want to highlight to you, patience is the test. Everything we receive from God comes with a test. Amen. 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 And the degree and the level yes. to which we can get through those tests Amen. is the 30, is Amen. the 60, Amen. is the 100 fold. Amen. 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 So let us pray. Father, I thank you that your word comes into us, Father, that it falls on the good ground of our hearts and that it will bear witness. It will bear witness to that which you have purposed in our lives, Lord. And as we get tested in our lives, as we go through our daily lives and we, and we get challenges, that we will overcome those challenges through you, Father, with patience, through the testing that we may realize the 30, the 60, and the 100 fold blessing in our lives. I thank you, Father, that you are always true to your word, that your word cannot fail. Oh, change our hearts, Lord. Change our hearts that we may receive from you the blessing that is ours. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Our fourth scripture that we want to read is John 17 from verse 21 to 23. This is where I was talking about how powerful this word of God is. Amen. John 17, 21 to 23, it says that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one yes. and that the world may know that you have sent me yes. and have loved them as I have loved Amen. you have loved me. Love me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are asking God yes. to make impact where people to be one. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. One in spirit. Yes. One in mind. Yes. To become a stronger church yes. and our leadership of Pastor Stan. Yes. No division, no fighting, only love for one another. You see, people will come when they see the love that is in us. And I want to ask you, I want to ask you this morning, when you leave here, keep the love inside of us. Let God flow through us. Let that love continue to be in us. You see, there are so many divisions in the body of Christ today that people cannot see the love. They cannot see and therefore because of that, they won't come to God because they see us fighting each other. One pastor attacking the other pastor. People disagree, but badly. We are encouraged. We are encouraged to be one. We must be one. This is... This is the one, this is the unfulfilled word yes. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus asked in that scripture, he said, let us be one as he and God is one. Amen. But the church is not one. Yes. We are not one. Yes. And so we have the opportunity to fulfill that word. Amen. We have that opportunity. Let us fulfill that word by becoming one in mind, one in heart, one in spirit, and one in love. Amen. Let us thank God that we are one. Father, we thank you that we are one. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you and your Father are one. And that you commanded, you said to us, let us be one as you. You showed us. You showed us that you and the Father are one. There was nothing that you did that wasn't from your Father. There was nothing that you demanded, nothing that you received that wasn't from your Father. And as we want to receive from God today, as we want to receive from God, let us be one. Let us be one in Christ. Let us be one in God. Oh, we love you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen. Our last 
four, uh, uh, three points this morning is Psalm 34 and verse 2. And, and, and this word is powerful. Just as all the other words were powerful. Psalm 34 and verse 2, and we've got a song to this as we've been taught by our pastor. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall yell with and be glad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for responding to our prayers instantly. Instantly. How do we know that God responds to our prayers instantly? And it's a sin in another scripture in the Bible where Jesus says, if your son asks you for something, will you give him a stick? No, you won't. No, you won't. And there's a scripture that says, my soul shall make a post in the Lord. So how can you post about something that you have not received? You must have received it. Amen. And so God answers our prayer. And it is for us to stay humble. So yes. many of us, yes. when we receive from God, yes. we the humbleness disappears yeah. and we're walking out. Oh, look what I've done. Look what I've got. Oh, no. Say, thank you. This is what I've received because God has blessed me. And let us testify to God's glory. Oh, Reba Shalaka. Then all of us will rejoice because this affirms that God answers praise. And when we see God answer praise for others, we know that He will answer praise for us. Oh, let us thank God. Father, we thank you because you're the answer. You answer our praise. We thank you, Lord, that we can boast in you. That we can say to everybody, look what the Lord has done. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you have supplied our needs each and every day. Oh, so many things you have given us. So many things. But the greatest of which are, you have given us your son. Oh, Reba Shalakata. Reba Shalakata. Thank you, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We now go into that part of our worship in our, in our, in our, in our service that is related to worship. And you know, we, we, we it's important because we need to worship God. God can't worship himself. Yes. So there is us. This is the one thing that we can do. We can worship. And there's a scripture in the Bible, Psalm 113 and verse 3. And it says, From the rising of the sun to the going to its going down, the Lord's name must be praised. And so that is what I want to encourage you this morning. With all your heart and with all your might, let us praise God. Hallelujah. We are welcome, Pastor Stan, to lead us in praise and worship. Thank you.